Hey you guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Tamika Thompson and for this video, I am going to be sharing my top tips on how you can save thousands of dollars on travel related expenses. So if you are subscribed to my channel or if you are following me on Instagram or you're connected with me on Facebook, then you know that 2023 was the year of travel for me, okay? I treated myself to about seven to eight vacations or trips, a majority of which were solo, so I did a lot of solo traveling last year and earlier this year even though I had just gotten laid off from my six-figure job your girl still went ahead and booked myself a three and a half week trip to Montego Bay Jamaica a lot of people don't realize that travel does not have to be super expensive and it does not have to break the bank there are some ways that you can either save a couple of coins or a lot of coins and I want to share the ways in which you can do that in this video so if you are someone who's looking to plan either your first solo trip your next solo trip or a trip with friends and you're just trying to figure out yo how can I save some extra coins this video is for you so without further ado let's get right into it Number one on this list is to travel during off season. And this is a biggie, hence why it is number one on the list because it is the tip that can potentially save you the most money. So when you travel during peak season, nine times out of 10, you are going to pay top dollar or the most premium price that you can pay for everything and that boils down to hotel bookings flight prices even excursions and activities and things to do while you are there and over time depending on the length of your stay that can add up to thousands of dollars that you can potentially keep in your pocket so the number one thing that I do before I officially decide that I am going to a destination for a particular time frame is I always look up when peak season is for the place that I plan on going to. For you guys who may not know what peak season is, peak season tends to mean that that is going to be the most in-demand time to go to that place, meaning it's gonna be crowded with tourists, okay? You're gonna be there and everybody and they mama and they cousin and they brother and they sister and everybody else <laughs> is going to be there. So peak season means expect crowds, expect wait times, expect things to potentially be packed to the brim. And for me, I don't particularly do crowds. I also don't like waiting. So traveling during off season tends to work the best for me. On the other side of that is low season. So low season or off season is going to be the time of year where people are not going to be traveling to that destination as much during that time so for example for my Aruba vlog my solo trip to Aruba if you guys checked out that video I went to Aruba for about eight to nine days and when I went it was August of 2023 which is actually low season for Aruba peak season for Aruba tends to be between November through either February or March and that's pretty average for if you are going to any destination in the Caribbean peak season all also for any destination tends to be around the holidays, spring break, the very beginning of summer, as well as Valentine's Day and then around the Labor Day holiday as well. So again, before you officially decide on where you're going and for how long and which days and all of that, please, 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 <laughs> in my Sabrina Carpenter voice, <laughs> double check to see if that time frame is going to be peak season. And again, this is if you have flexibility or availability to toggle with the dates. If you are going for a particular event, such as a wedding or some sort of an anniversary trip or something like that, and there's nothing you can do, the dates are set in stone and it is what it is, then this tip may not apply to you. Number two on this list is to consider or opt for locally owned bed and breakfast spots or locally owned hotels and lodges over five-star, all-inclusive, you know, top of the line, top tier, fancy schmancy resorts and hotels. Something that I've learned about myself the more I travel alone is that I don't need all of the bells and whistles. I am not a heavy drinker, so I don't need a 24-7 a drink package or anything like that and a lot of the times with those resorts you don't use all of the amenities and things that are included in that rate 
during your stay. So if you're staying at a five star resort, you're probably going to have, you know, the breakfast buffet, you're going to have a gazillion pools, you're going to have a state of the art fitness center and, you know, a bunch of stuff that you really don't even use half of the time and you end up wasting money on those things. So a little hack that I found is to look up locally owned bed and breakfast spots or locally owned hotels in the area that offer a more authentic experience while still making me feel safe. And I did this in Jamaica. So if you guys checked out my Jamaica solo travel vlog, or if you haven't, I highly recommend doing so. <laughs> I stayed at a locally owned bed and breakfast spot that was not too far from the beach. And the host was amazing. It was family owned. And with the breakfast in the morning, they actually cooked the food on the island, like made to order and it was fresh. I learned that sometimes when you're staying at those fancy resorts, they will make the food, but they won't make it as it's supposed to be culturally made, if that makes sense. Like, in Jamaica at the resorts, the food was way more Americanized versus more Jamaican. And at the bed and breakfast spot, I got to try a bunch of like authentic Jamaican dishes that were really, really good that would have been prepared differently at the hotel or at the all inclusive resort. So when you are looking up places to stay, instead of going for, you know, Hilton or Hyatt or uh, Marriott or just those well known, you know, top tier brands that you're familiar with consider staying at a local owned bed and breakfast spot it can also be a little bit more cozy and have more of like an intimate feel and for me I like knowing that I'm supporting a locally owned small business over this huge hotel chain that is already making billions of dollars I would rather opt for the mom and pop spot but before you do this make sure that you are looking up reviews to make sure that the place is safe see what other people are saying and also make sure that the place that you're considering has what you're looking for. So no, I don't necessarily need a state-of-the-art fitness center. I don't need a gazillion pools to go to. I don't need a beachside bar. But I do like to make sure that the place is safe and secure. I also don't tend to care for rooms with balconies, right? So whatever your travel or room must-have checklist is, just make sure that that place has that and don't feel inclined to stay there if it's missing what you feel you need to have a quality and comfortable stay. Number three on this list is to toggle with your departure and your return date. So with my previous job, I was lucky in a sense where I had unlimited PTO and I could pretty much take vacation whenever and wherever there was no <laughs> there was no issue with me ever being able to leave so there were some trips I took where I would leave on a Sunday morning there were some trips I took where I would come back on a Friday afternoon I would just kind of play around with the departure dates and the return dates and just see what time I could leave and what time I could return that was the cheapest if you guys watch my vlogs any vlog I recently did a layoff day in the life uh, type of vlog and then I did a couple of travel vlogs your girl is an early bird okay it is nothing for me to be up at three o'clock four o'clock in the morning and I have found that the earlier the flight I get on the cheaper it is so if my flight is leaving at five o'clock in the morning from midway okay we get to midway around around 2 a.m and we get up around midnight and that's just what it is <laughs> when you are on you know the airline website whether it's southwest or american or united just kind of click around and see what the prices are on Monday morning at 6 a.m. versus Tuesday morning at 9 a.m., right? And when you're returning, what I found is that Thursday, Friday, Saturday tends to be the peak days for people coming back. So what did I do? I would go ahead and come back on a Wednesday or a Tuesday afternoon or sometimes even a Monday. I think with Jamaica, I came back on a Monday evening or a Monday afternoon or something like that. So always toggle with those uh, departure dates and those return dates to figure out how can you leave and come back for the lowest amount of money? Next on this list is to plan and budget for your excursions in advance. So going back to Aruba, I looked up the top things to do in Aruba and I looked up the prices for those things to do and I included that in my travel budget ahead of time. What some people will do is they'll wait till they till they get there and then they'll buy, you know, the excursion package or, you know, whatever it is that they want to do. They'll decide the day before, sometimes the morning of, right? And that's okay if you like like to live on the edge like that and pay extra money you got it <laughs> go ahead go for it but for me your girl is big on budget and so I like to 
pop on Viator or TripAdvisor and just get a feel for how much certain things cost and also the time of day that I'll be doing those things. So another thing is that sometimes depending on the time of day that you go or do a certain excursion, it'll be more money. So like excursions between noon and to one o'clock or three o'clock tends to be the most popular because that's when people, you know, tend to get out and about, everybody has gotten dressed, you know, people like to sleep in. So those ticket prices for those excursions tend to be higher. So again, going back to the early bird comment, what do I do? Your girl books the earliest time slot for every excursion and that tends to save me on average between 20 to 50 dollars now if you are someone who likes to sleep in on your vacations and you just that's just you that's just who you are then this tip may not apply to you that is totally okay but even still plan for what it is that you want to do and include that in your budget ahead of time so if you know you know what Tamika I'm gonna be sleeping in I'm not trying to do no no 10 a.m or 8 a.m tour I am definitely going to do the one o'clock tour that's totally that's totally okay but just look up the ticket prices in advance so you know how much you're going to be paying extra and include that in your activity budget and I hope that makes sense next on this list may ruffle some feathers but to each its own and that is do not break the bank over a brand new entire wardrobe for this one trip where you're only going to be there a couple of days now if this is a special trip again a a wedding an anniversary maybe even a birthday right then this tip may not apply to you you're going to spend what you're going to spend on your clothes and that's just you and I'm not mad at it But for me, I realized that in my 20s, when I was just getting started with travel, I would be spending between $200 to $400 on new clothes for a trip every time I would go somewhere. And now in my 30s, it's just like, girl, that is not sustainable. So what I've started doing is at the beginning of the year, particularly in January or the end of the year in December, when summer clothes or summer attire and vacation attire or apparel are like all on sale, I will buy, I will spend $300 to $400 for clothes for all of my trips for the year. And I will, dun, 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 I rewear clothes now. (laughs) Like I wore the same dress that I wore to Jamaica um, when I went to Jamaica again. So I repeated the same dress and then some swimsuits that I wore um, in Aruba, I wore in Jamaica when I went again. You get what I mean? So it's like, you don't have to spend a lot of money on a whole new wardrobe. Get some staple pieces. Treat yourself to a new swimsuit. If maybe you lost weight like I did, you guys know I opened up about my weight loss journey. So of course I ended up having to buy new clothes in general. But with those new clothes, I just wore them throughout my whole trip, especially if I had a favorite piece that I really, really liked, like a sundress or a swimsuit or a cover up. Like you don't need a brand, like a whole brand new wardrobe with every trip that you take if you are someone who is like me where you plan for your trips for the year uh, at the very beginning of the year so for me I like to plan my trips between six to eight months in advance again I buy everything all at once one shopping trip no matter how much it's gonna be and I just wear those clothes or swap them out or mix and match them for the rest of the trips that I have for the rest of the year. Next on this list is to ask locals where the best food spots are versus going to all of the fancy schmancy five-star restaurants. Now, when I went to Aruba, this was a hack. So I had an amazing taxi driver. His name was Kendrick. And every single day I would be like, yo, Kendrick, where should I go to eat today? What's the best spot? And sometimes it was a food truck or it was a burger joint or it was like a little hut restaurant off of the beach or something like that. I went to some of the fancier spots, like I went to a really nice Portuguese restaurant, and then I ended up going to a really nice Italian restaurant overlooking the beach, and I had wine and risotto and all of the things. (laughs) But aside from that, I went to the local spots for breakfast, or I went to the local spots for lunch. Another thing that you can consider is going to those fancy schmancy spots for lunch instead of 
of dinner. So we all know that dinner tends to be the most expensive meal, right? That's where you're going to have your steaks or your roasted chickens or, you know, just like those really filling meals that tend to be a little bit pricier versus lunch where you're going to have, you know, your salads or your light pasta dishes, your soups and things like that. So you guys know the difference between like a lunch menu and a dinner menu for those fancy restaurants consider going for lunch instead of instead of dinner just to save a little bit of money but whoever is driving you around or if there's a concierge in your or at your hotel or the person at the check-in desk ask them every day like what's a really great locally owned restaurant that I can check out what's you know what where do you go when you get off of work or where do you go for lunch to eat and I guarantee you you will more than likely be able to taste and have more authentic dishes and a more authentic cultural culinary experience as well which is really cool next on this list is to find some free or some cheaper things to do for low or no spend days so for each of my trips that I take I like to have a couple of low or no spend days scattered throughout just so I'm balancing my budget and I'm making sure not to go over whatever that threshold is that I plan to spend for the entire trip for excursions food uh you know um, souvenirs and things like that. So with Aruba, I was lucky in a sense that all of the beaches in Aruba were free. There were no fees or charges or any type of anything to get in. And all I had to pay for was my beach chair or, you know, if I would get one of those villas that you lay in on the beach and that was it. In Jamaica, there was a fee or a cover charge to get into every single beach. And then there was also an additional fee if I planned on getting a chair at those beaches. So I had to budget for that. So if I was like, okay, this is going to be a low spend day. I'm only spending money at the beach and that is it. So look up some free things to do while you are there. Or if there aren't any free things or cheaper things to do, maybe you just have one day where you just hang around your hotel or you hang around your room where you lay on the balcony or you just sit at the beach and things like that. And that's just if you want to, you don't have to. And last on this list is use credit card points if you have a travel rewards card or any type of cashback rewards card that you use frequently enough to where you um, are getting back those points like a substantial number of points use them on your trip y'all I signed up for the Southwest rapid rewards credit card last year and when I say it was probably one of the best financial decisions I've made in a long time <laughs> I mean it so at this point I've had the card for a little bit over a year now. I have not paid full price for a flight probably since I got that card because that the, the card and the reward system, the point system, how it works is seriously so amazing. Southwest is one of my favorite airlines to fly. I enjoy the customer experience and nine times out of 10 when I'm going somewhere, I am flying with them unless I'm going somewhere where F Southwest does not fly. And that happened a couple of times last year, but not too often. Um, if again, if you don't have a travel rewards card, get one. If your credit is good enough and you know that you know, you've been on your stuff money wise and you know you'll qualify for it. I highly recommend getting a, a travel rewards credit card and using your points and, you know, pay attention to the perks and how you earn points and how you can use them and use them for your trips. I have three upcoming trips and I have barely paid for my flight like I think with the flights that I have I've paid like taxes which is only like 50 or 60 bucks if you don't have a travel rewards card but you have a cashback rewards card so for me I also have the Bank of America uh, cash rewards card and then I have the Chase Freedom card I think is what it's called those are cash back cards where it's like however much I spend I get a percentage back and I'm able to cash I'm able to cash them out get the money and then I can use them for the flight so if I wanted to I wouldn't have even had to pay the taxes for those flights I could have just redeemed the cash from my Bank of America card and you know put it on used it to pay the $50 but I didn't do that but nevertheless <laughs> if you have points if you have cards that have points highly recommend using those for flights hotels and excursions as well well that's it y'all that's how you can save 
money on travel related expenses on your upcoming trip or if you are, you know, traveling with friends. I am frugal friend, okay? I am budget Betty. I am always going to find a way to save money. And those tips combined saved me over $6,000 last year. I think when I kind of did the math and the calculations, I saved around like $6,700 just by doing some of the tips that I shared in this video. Again, travel does not have to be expensive, um, but there are some things that you can compromise on if you are someone who doesn't need the five-star luxury experience all the time, or maybe you just can't afford that all the time, but you need a getaway because you're stressed, your job is stressing you out, you're trying to get a new job, you're job searching, like you just need to get away, which is typically the reasons why I travel. <laughs> You can use the tips in this video to help you save some money. Really hope that you guys found this video helpful. If so, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button down below. Go ahead and give me a like. Thank you guys for watching and I will see y'all in the next tip video. Bye y'all.